This time the Muslims are threatening the creators of South Park over, get this, the Prophet Muhammad depicted in a giant bear costume. Sure, South Park depicted Muhammad back in 2001 without incident. Then about four years later on came the Danish cartoon incident, where the Islamic nations decided that their Dark Age laws about anyone who draws the Prophet Muhammad should be put to death should be enforced on the rest of the world, and in the ensuing tantrum over a hundred people died worldwide. Over a hundred people died because of that. And now, seeing as South Park recently depicted Muhammad in disguise as a giant bear, they decided to oh-so-generously warn the creators of South Park that they will end up like Theo Van Gogh. You know, the unarmed guy who was cycling to work before he was shot eight times, then stabbed, and then had his head cut off, simply because he made a film critical of Islam. Bravo on a prime example of why your religion has no place in the first world. You see, all that barbaric stuff in the Quran about cutting off arms, legs, tongues, heads and so on. Sharia law, you call it. You know, all that stuff that you actually enforce in the Middle East about stonings and whatnot. There's similar stuff in the Bible, you know, utterly destroy those who don't buy into the religion and stone disobedient children and whatever. However, ultimately... After one and a half thousand years of acting very much as you do now, it was convinced in the Enlightenment that that really wasn't the way forwards. Mankind moved forward out of the age of religion and into the broad sunlit uplands of the age of reason and the first world, and it's never looked back since. I mean, let me make this absolutely clear. The computer that you're sitting in front of watching this video on is a, a symphony of the fruit of scientific naturalism. You want to live in the first world? You want to live in the age of reason and, and taste its sweetmeats? That's really not a problem. But like every other religion, you can check your Iron Age baggage at the door, or else go back to the Dark Ages and live in that time warp called the Middle East, where the only glimmers of lights that permeate that dark, dingy human backwater is what spills over from your enlightened neighbours who have not shackled their minds to ignorance. Your alternative is to fight. The only way the nation that has lived in the Dark Ages for 800 years can, by, by terrorism. We're commanded to terrorise the disbelievers, and this is a religion, like You're I said. We're commanded to terrorise the in disbelievers? The Quran says very clearly in the Arabic language, language Torhibuna, this means terrorise them. It's a command from Allah. You know, like that Van Gogh guy you killed. Yeah, stabbing and shooting an unarmed man. Yeah, that's a showcase of the virtues of Islam. Such divine inspired courage. After all, there's no better way of showing that yours is the religion of peace and enlightenment than by shooting and stabbing an unarmed man, and then threatening others with the same fate. And yet, of course, the criticism of the moderate Muslims was conspicuous only by its absence, and that really does speak volumes of their attitude to these acts. However, the Enlightenment did not just raise the standard of living. It, it did more than deliver us clean water, the eradication of smallpox and the PlayStation. The rift between the prowess of the First World and the advanced warriors of Islam on the battlefield can be put in no lesser terms than the contrast between ants and gods. Those of us who have lived in the Age of Reason understand that with great power comes great responsibility and that the power of the Age of Reason must never be allowed to fall into the hands of those from the Age of Religion. For there is no doubt in my mind that if such power were delivered into the primitive hands of a theocracy, that genocide of the infidel and doing Allah's work would be synonymous terms. But let's say that all your box cutters and shooting and stabbing unarmed filmmakers, you managed to actually threaten the enlightened world. And I mean threatened beyond crashing a few airliners. Your only achievement will have been to have awakened a sleeping giant and to have filled it with a terrible resolve. If you're going to pray to Allah for anything, beg him that you never meet the giant in such a mood. For your continued existence is entirely at the discretion and goodwill of the giant, and that it is all that stands between you being granted continued existence 
and you receiving yourself the self-same judgment that you would so zealously impose on the rest of the world if only you had the power. So it comes down to the question of your vicious and petty threats against a cartoon creator. That is, your attempt to limit free speech through intimidation. Well, I cannot speak for them, but I can speak for myself. And to those who live in the age of religion, I say this. This is the blasphemy that you find so offensive. This is the Prophet Muhammad depicted as a squirrel in slow motion. I did this. Your move, do your worst, for even your worst will serve as nothing but a catalyst to strengthen the walls of the age of reason, to awaken the giant. Even if you strike your hardest blow, its operationally insignificant effects will simply make us more powerful than your dark age minds can fathom. All you can do is set these words to resonate down the halls of eternity. You see, you cannot shoot words, you cannot behead an idea, and you cannot intimidate concepts, and if you try, the fulfilment of your worst threat will serve as nothing but an icon, written in the blood of the free, that you have no place in the first world.